Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be going through OpenAI's Dev Day announcements, specifically ChatGPT Turbo, as well as looking at the Playground, which will actually allow you to create your own GPT assistant. All right, so first things first, we're actually going to take a look at the, the dashboard and the UI updates here. So if you look at the new screen for the dashboard, it's a basically different uh, UI. You have GPT-4 up here in the corner, which gives you all of Dolly browsing and analysis and 3.5, as well as plugins. The other thing you can do is you can actually upload content here. So, uh, you know, whether it's an image or CSV, you can kind of interact with it from the home page and it'll switch in between the different models. This is only for the plus version of ChatGPT. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing that's really cool is they announced the custom GPTs. And so if you go over here to explore, you can see the GPTs that are made by OpenAI. So you have things like Dolly, data analysis, uh, things for game time, even a coaching or writing coach, and uh, some other uh, graphical ones like Coloring Book Hero and things like that. But if you want to create your own GPT, right now it's in beta, and at least for me, it's closed off, and it's saying it's in the it's coming available in the next couple of weeks. However, there's a workaround for this, so you can actually create an assistant with your data uh, by using the playground, and so that's what we're going to look at next. So if you go to the playground, you have a couple different options. You have on the sidebar here all the uh, the playground and the assistance. So assistance is new. Um, what you can do is you can actually click create and then it'll give you this little another little sidebar that allows you to put in a friendly name, some instructions, model types, which we'll go over in a little more detail, and then the different types of tools that you can put and files. Now, you can go ahead and use this and create your assistant here. However, I found that the playground is actually uh, like better for a lot of the tools. So we're going to go ahead and click out of here and go over to the playground. All right, real quick, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know, and we can continue putting out great content for this channel. All right, let's get back to nerding. All right, so now that you can see the playground is is loaded, the view is a little bit different. So we have the same kind of functionality here that create an assistant. We have some clear options, but then we also have the logs, and this is super important. We're going to go through that as we're building our assistant. So what we're going to do for this one is we're actually going to take an ebook that uh, I put together on web accessibility. So we're just going to call this WCAG. We're going to tell it you are a web accessibility bot on helping software developers. And then we'll go over what the models are later. But for now, we're just going to use the GPT-4.11.6 preview. The other things here are tools. So you can actually add functions. So you can. what's cool about this, though, is not only can you hit external APIs, but you can actually add multiple functions. So we aren't going to uh, actually use these, but we can just go ahead and show that you can have multiple with their examples. So this is going out and checking the weather or stock. Then you're going to have the code interpreter, which allows you to look at different types of data and formatting. Um, I did try and upload a CSV, but that didn't seem to work. So we're going to stick with our PDF. And then retrieval. This is really cool because in the PDF, it can actually make an annotation to where it's looking in the file. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll add our web accessibility PDF. You can see it's loading here. And then what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and put in a message. So we'll just say, what are, oh, first we got to save. What are the standards in the US. And so you'll notice that I didn't have to actually state what WCAG is. So we're going out and then here's where we're actually putting out the threads of the logs. So this is incredibly cool because it's showing us the HTTP requests 
in order to get this information back. So now it's talking about the uh, information about WCAG specifically, how it started in the US. It's talking about WCAG 2.0. That was what was in the PDF at the time. Now we're at 2.2. But you can keep seeing like how it's going through the logic of the tools being called in these threads. And you can see the run. Now we're in the code interpreter. So before it listed the fact that it was going to make a tool call and it did a type of retrieval, again, doing a retrieval, but it's a code interpreter. And so it gives us a lot to be able to debug. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little different. We're going to look for different parts of the world. So we're going to say EU. And rather than add and run, we're just going to click add. And then we'll say AUS for Australia. Go ahead and add that. And then we're going to do Canada. And this time we'll do add and run and we'll get a different thread. And what's really cool about this is you're noticing that every time it adds, it's not actually running the the assistant. Now that we've done this, it's posting the runs and the message and we're going through our thread. So as you can see, it took all three of these, all three of these user inputs, then actually ran what it was looking for. So now it's found information on the EU, Canada, and Australia, and it's also pinpointed the annotation of the source. So this goes back to the retrieval as well. So this is super cool about how, just like this, we already have a working chat bot that's based off information through a PDF, as well as you can see it with CSVs. Uh, the thing that's the coolest for me is actually watching the log, seeing the information that's coming back through so that we can find, oh, this is where it's actually trying to run the weather function. That's pretty sweet. But being able to look at this log and see the execution makes it really important and really helpful for what we're going to look at coming up, which is the API call. All right, so we're going to look at the models and try and examine like a little bit more of what's been launched on Dev Day. So the first thing is, is that uh, GPT Turbo is now released and it has 128K context window. And GPT 3.5 has been updated to 16 context window, 16K. And so we're going to take a look at what that actually means. So the other things you can kind of notice is 3.5 is standard. Dolly doesn't say Dolly 2 or Dolly 3. It's just standard. And you have GPT 4 and GPT 4 Turbo. So let's take a look at this one first. And this is what we were using for our chatbot was the GPT 4 11.6 preview. And although it has 128,000 tokens and your training data has been updated to April 2023, the thing to note is that the maximum return is 4,096 output tokens, meaning that it can only return the 4,000 tokens, but it can ingest a total of 128,000. So that's a an important thing to note, um, the other thing is that GPT-4 vision preview. So I've actually been really excited to see this, that in the API, we'll be able to, able to actually send uh, images and interact with them. If you haven't checked out our, our other video on GPT vision, definitely check it out. All right, so let's keep going and let's dig into the API now. All right, so if we look at the assistance API, this is the API, these are the API calls that were being made in order to interact with the Playground OpenAI that we built our assistant in. So you can see that we were, this call is talking about how it's actually gonna create the assistant. So if you look at the UI, they kind of match up the same, right? You have your name, your instructions, the type of tools you're going to have, and then the model. Then you start a thread. Next, you're going to be adding a message. So as long as you've uh, created a thread, you can actually use your thread ID. 
and you can do the uh, the object. Fuck. All right, so now we're looking at the assistant API. This is going to be the code that's actually running in the playground in order to create your the assistant. So some things to note right out of the bat is the fact that you can only use the, the new models in order to create these assistants. And they you can use Python and, and Node.js are what they have the SDKs. The other thing is you need to make sure that you've updated your package so that it has the beta object in there. Other than that, it looks very similar to how the UI was with our, uh, our assistant. You can see we have a name, we have instructions, we have tools that we're going to add, and then we have our model. The next piece is we're actually going to create a thread. A thread allows us to add messages and then actually run them. So once we have this thread, they then we can add to the messages. The other thing to note is that you can have either text or optionally add files, which is super cool. So then once you have your uh, thread in place, you actually run the assistant. So that's where we were seeing previously where we could just add to this thread object, right? And then we ultimately run the assistant and then we're awaiting to see the thread response. All right, and that's what we have today. So what we've done is we've actually looked through the multiple different models that have been released. We kind of looked at some of the tokens and what they actually mean. And then we went through the building our own chat GPT assistant in the playground, as well as looked at some of the assistant API docs. So don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next